Good afternoon. It's nearly there. Um, I grew up in a country where good people could easily dehumanize good people. People who were operating in a system that enabled them to do so. A system created by people, although there were many people that were convincing me it was designed by God. I remember, I was 18, and I was part of a student movement. We were looking at ways to collaborate better across racial divides. Friends, family, they were throwing the Bible at me, using it to legitimize a dehumanizing system. They called me a traitor, troublemaker, and they strongly encouraged me to leave the country. Troubled, I left South Africa. And I came to this beautiful city of Ghent to study psychology. Some would say to work at McDonald's. <laughs> but I wanted to understand what drives people to do so. A couple of years later, I uh, entered the business world. In the business world, I was a marketeer, and I soon realized that business can also dehumanize. The way we think of the consumer as a target, the way we think of the competition as the enemy, the way we think of the marketplace as a battleground, this all leads to us operating more at exploiting one another rather than creating value together. Could we not imagine another way of doing business? Could we not imagine unlocking more meaningful growth by humanizing business? On our adventure and exploration, we learned we could. But we had the help of the most amazing and most unlikely three mentors. And they were not the good, the bad, and the ugly. The first mentor that came to our rescue was the magician. We all magicians, by the way. The magician has the power to shift us from the world that is to a world that can be. Humanizing business starts with our ability to imagine a better future for other people and for ourselves. When I look back at South Africa, the issue was not that there were enough or too little people that cared. There were enough the people that people cared, but it was not enough. There were not enough people who imagined a better and alternative South Africa. Luckily, we had some amazing man who from his island, Robin Island, in his prison cell, could imagine a different South Africa, a multiracial democracy, which he later rebranded to the Rainbow Nation, peace with itself and the rest of the world. Now, some people will say, hell, what's this got to do with business? So I'll bring it a little bit closer to business. A couple of years ago, we started a business in rural Africa, Benin, and uh, it was called the Baobab Express. It was initiated by two fantastic people, Frit van Kran, CEO of Materialize, a company that provides 3D printing guides and software and engineering support to surgeons all over the world. And Chris van Asch was heading a NGO that was running several hospitals in Benin. So together, these caring people thought, OK, let's do something for doctors in the hospitals that Chris was running so that they do better operations. Great. They were good at that. They, they did care. But they did something even greater. They started looking around and realized that in Benin, they have a bigger problem. Maybe I should just show a film to let you see. You can 
So what do you see? You see that in Benab, it was more dangerous to get to the hospital than to have an operation. So Chris and Fred called upon friends and partners, and they challenged us. They said, how can we have a bigger impact? How can we imagine a better future for these people? So what started as a project to help surgeons um, help patients in the hospitals in rural Africa turned into a transportation business that gives reliable, safe, and affordable transport to today more than millions of customers at an affordable price just because we were willing to imagine a different future for other people. The second um, mentor that came to our rescue was the game designer. The, de the game designer unlocks our capacity to contribute. You see, the biggest job of a game designer is he has to get us and engage us emotionally and motivate us to achieve our own goals while achieving his. And business is not very good at that. The way we like to run things is we want to control the, all the value. We want to get to the end of the supply chain. Now, the story, a great example of a business that has done a great job at uh, unlocking the contribution capacity of many people is obviously Tex. You know, TED was aiming to expand its organizational reach and broaden its mission of ideas worth spreading globally. But it was constrained by the small size of its team. So Chris Anderson, the current owner of TED, and his team came together and they said, how are we going to face this challenge? They wanted to expand. So they created TEDx, a format under which they have no control. They actually, from a business perspective, gave away their business model, and they gave away their brand. And they trusted that their community would do something better with it. Now, the results are pretty amazing. They started out thinking, OK, we can do 30 or so events extra a year. They slightly missed the mark. Today, there's 1,500 events taking place in 168 countries per year. That's seven a day. Wow. Second, they, TED itself has 150 people working for them. They have TEDx has 50,000 volunteers working for that. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what Ted gets out of it, they've collected 65,000 highly curated, brilliant speeches that we've seen today. More than 2 billion people have watched that. I think that deserves a real hand of applause. <laughs> For the last mentor that came to our rescue, I would like you all to stand. I'll do the same. So please, let's stand. Come on. It's actually the first time that I get my kids to stand when I tell them to stand. Thank you for that. <laughs> so. That's it. Good. The last mentor that came to our rescue was the activist. The activist knows how to unlock the power of we so that we collectively can make a difference. Thank you. Shall I stay? Yeah? OK. So the activist that has inspired me most is Nelson Mandela. You know, he made me want to become South African again. He turned using rugby. He turned the people who feared him most into faithful fans. He avoided a war, but he stood up for something much bigger. And he stood up for human dignity and respect and made a difference, not only for himself, not even only for South Africa, 
I think, for the rest of the world. So there's someone who deserves, deserves a big hand of applause. I think it's Nelson Mandela. Thank you. Let So to finish, or close to the finish, thank you. People will say, what the heck has that got to do with humanizing business? You know, this guy's lost it. We may be in a church, but no. Business can also position and operate to serve something bigger than ourselves, not just the consumer. A great company that has done that so is Ben & Jerry's. I love working with these guys. They redefine themselves as a social justice brand, serving not consumers, but aspiring activists. They put their product, product like this, as an activist tool, letting people become more aware of climate injustice. I was with them, you know, when they gathered activists, aspiring activists, 26 from, what, from 26 different countries in Paris, in COP21, to go and put some pressure on our world leaders to do the right thing. This is how they told the story. This is what happens when ice cream is just two degrees warmer than it should be. For Ben and Jerry's, it's a mess. For the planet, it's a metaphor because a two-degree warming of our planet's climate would have an equally dramatic, though much more significant, impact. But we can prevent it. If we take action and demand that governments, policymakers, and business leaders do what it takes to stay below two degrees, we can reverse the trend of climate change. By acting now, we'll create innovative solutions that keep our planet, and those who live on it, thriving. Because while a two-degree change may not seem like much, the truth is, it means the world to us. Join the global climate movement and take action now at benjerry.com slash climate. So this is the idea that I want to share with you, and I hope you will share with others. Yes. We can imagine a different way of doing business. Yes, we can unlock more meaningful growth by humanizing business. But it starts with us not accepting to be the victim of dehumanizing system. We cannot use God, neither the invisible hand of the market, as an excuse to do so. Rather, let's build visions, tools, and engagement programs that allow us to create value as people, not just as experts, with people, not just as suppliers, for people, not just as consumers, so that we can make a difference together. Thank you.